guys, it's Rob Ring here, hope you're doing very well. So today's video is called Valium Withdrawal Diaries, 22 milligrams. So to cut a very long story short, my derealization symptoms kicked in about five years ago, just over five years ago, and the only thing I could find to help it was Valium Diazepam. So I started taking that and basically got onto an average of 30 to 35 milligrams a day. Um, was procuring it from independent sources. Valium is a legal drug, I may uh, stipulate. Anyway, so the <laughs> let's say the supply chain ran out, bit of a disaster, managed to eventually persuade um, a GP and a psychiatrist, you know, one of the people that I need, I need the stuff to function, you know? I was teaching music at very good schools at a high level, I was using it for that, I wasn't laying on the street um, yelling at people. So, I was um, slightly under the under the slight illusion that they would um, say, yeah, okay, and give me a lifetime supply. But what actually happened was I went there and they said, um, they gave me a, a bridge prescription, which is called, because I was, I didn't, <laughs> basically, it's like cutting cold turkey or heroin with it coming off the valley. So cold turkey isn't isn't a good option. So I got a bridge prescription over the Christmas holidays. It's like 30 milligrams a day, legitimately prescribed, um, and that did me for the holidays. I was just flooded with relief. But I actually still had some. And then I went for a meeting with a, uh, a psychiatrist, and he said, "You can't stay on it long term. I'll give you um, like a gentle six month." weaning uh, process. So which started a few months ago and it did start with me at first I was going to the pharmacy every day uh, which is um, a bit unpleasant and humiliating and surprisingly inconvenient um, and then it was every other day and then corona started so that was a <laughs> pleasant atmosphere in the pharmacy they had a massive perfect screen and the new owners are wearing fucking blue masks and blue gloves I felt a bit sorry for, for them, this Indian family who just taken over there and like a week later <laughs> COVID hit. Oh, I guess business has never been better in in some ways. So anyway, this, and now I'm down to one once a week um, and I'm on 22 milligrams from 30. So I've definitely noticed, because it's very easy to attribute the wrong causes to things, but since... Um, the reduction, very slow reduction, the six month one, from 30 to zero, I've noticed uh, excess energy or anxiety, as you might guess, which is why I've been um, particularly motivated to doing lots of lots of exercise in my uh, daily, daily hourly allowance. Um, if you are coming off Valium, I would recommend doing it slowly, and I would recommend finding replacements, which is a cliche, but if you can gradually wean them into your life, you know, it's not like you get gold cold turkey and go running every day and that's that. It's you, you come off slowly and slowly find things to to uh, to replace it. Um, a nausea, a little bit of nausea I've noticed as I've, as I've been coming, uh, coming off it. Occasionally a tiny bit shaky, but nothing scary or panic attacky or you know Parkinson's-esque. Um, the good thing, why I would, if you want to come off Valley, because it's so addictive, um, it's hard to come off. But the good, the good thing about a legitimate weaning prescription, you're not getting it off a friend or the dark web or a friend who's a doctor, is that you can, you have no choice but to wean because you're not getting, um, you don't have the chance to be getting too much. I'm just trying to help the uh, wind. You don't have the chance to have more value, do you know what I mean? You can't suddenly crash and burn one day and have 35 milligrams, just to get rid of the uh, anxiety and all um, And bear in mind two things. Most doctors will help you get off it. If you go for a meeting there expecting a lifetime, lifetime prescription, um, that's quite misguided. Even if they've sort of suggested that might be what you can get. 
you'll get there and they, they want to they want to get you off it because um, a lot of people say diazepam long term is um is not a good is not a good solution. Personally I you know different strokes for different folks. It's helped me a hell of a lot and I take the you know the downsides if I could keep doing it but I can't so I've <laughs> got to find replacements. Um, like everything, so imagine if, if you were eating really healthily and smoking, say, a bit of mild weed, and that was, and you didn't, do, you didn't drink, you didn't do any drugs, you didn't do anything else, but you sat around watching TV for 10 hours a day. I wonder if that's healthier than someone who eats crap, but is very productive and exercises and, and socializes, do you know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's often hard to tell what's causing what. And probably the smarter you are, the more you misdiagnose yourself, you know? I think people do it all the time. You convince yourself your depression or anxiety or whatever is, is because of food or because of um, want for this person in your life or because of your job. And you can convince you, and you can sort of delude yourself. Um, it's probably multi-causal, as, as most things are. So the point being, now that it's sort of sunny and I'm staying at this place in the countryside, and I'm making a point of just doing stuff all the time, like writing and my friend's got this dog I take the dog out for a run every morning. It's very, very lucky to be able to do. Uh, makes a big difference. So, do you know what I mean? As long as I stay productive and, and healthy, um, I might feel better coming off Valium than when I was on it. Just because I'll, I'm living a more fulfilling life inadvertently because of all the excess anxiety given by the... Um, by the Valium withdrawal. Anyway, so <laughs> not to make this too much of an, air, an airing um, dirty, la dirty laundry in public thing, but I think if people are coming off it, especially at a time like this in a pandemic or so called, um, we can hopefully help each other out. Uh, I would love, <laughs> trust me, I would love some tips on how to um, deal with. Valium withdrawal. Um, I've heard chewing gum is a good one, but I'm sure there are better ones out there. Um, so I'll be, if it's okay with you, I'll probably be letting you know every few milligrams how, how it's going and see if, I, if I've got any more tips um, on how to on how to come off. Because it's very, very difficult to come off. Uh, <laughs> even in train spotting, where he's covering a heroin in his room, his mum says, he asked for some jellies, some Valium, diazepam, and his mum says, you're worse, you're worse with that, you're worse coming off that than you are with the heroin. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, don't, I think Valium addiction is one of the most commonly prescribed drugs and people use it to function, you know, it's not, it's not street heroin. Um, but it's tricky and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here for you if you're coming off it or thinking of coming off it. Um, and if you're taking it and your dose is getting higher and higher, I, don't, I know nothing about you, I know nothing about your situation, but I do know the more you take, the harder it is <laughs> to uh, come off if the supply chain runs out, which it might. Alright guys, take it easy, stay strong. Um, please subscribe, leave a comment below, uh, links to other stuff below, check out my other videos on derealization, anxiety, depression, uh, theme tunes on a classical guitar and all that. Take it easy, peace, bye bitches.